Okay. Uh, we have a, a joint committee workshop here between the uh, facilities committee and the uh, uh, budget committee. There's a lot of items that are going to cross over. I recognize the members of the facilities committee as Mr. Joe Rodriguez and I. I'm going to pass this over to Mr. Elizondo, who is the chair of the budget committee. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Um, so, Mr. Sanchez, I guess we'll go with the Pledge of Allegiance and then we'll take on. Yeah, and I'd like to recognize everybody that's in the audience as well as everybody that's here, board members present. There's a lot of people here today, so it'll take us about two hours to go name by name. But thank you, everybody, for being here. appreciate it. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much. Any opening remarks, uh, Dr. Zendejas? No, I, I think we're ready to present to the board all the updates. Thank you. Mr. Sanchez, you have the floor. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, just just a quick comment, and then I think we can go through this thing real quick. Uh, and, and, and real quick, just to intervene, uh, we're going to go through the whole presentation, and then at the end we'll, we'll, we'll uh, open the floor for comments and answers. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, <clears throat> just uh, uh, bringing things in perspective, um, I think we, we've we already uh, presented somewhat um, the three, three or four biggest items on the budget. We, we, we hit a little bit on personnel, on staffing. We've done, we done uh, came to the board with insurance issues, and I think we resolved that. Those are two of the largest single line items on the budget. Uh, I know we have, uh, the board has approved uh, raises, so those are already in the hopper and ready to, for us to do calculations. The next, I think the next, the reason for this meeting is because from this meeting, on facilities is some of the larger single line items or ticket items that we have, uh, but this is not necessarily uh, something that is operational. These are projects that we're going to build them, and, and then we're hoping to get out of these projects in five years on the, on the financing, and then we'll have additional resources to continue doing some additional uh, 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 projects in the future. And then, so <clears throat> we wanted to bring this up to you. Uh, the, the, if we go to step one, of course, step two uh, just shows you my, you know, shows a, a pictorial of how the budget, the budget calendar, again, all these dates are very tentative on, on, uh, on tab three, on page four. And then, of course, uh, uh, the item, the first item that we really want to uh, look at is agenda number four in your agenda. And what I did here, and you'll see this, we actually included the actual advertisement that appeared in the newspaper. So, uh, so you can see that the district is following uh, what we promised the community we were going to do. So on page five, you see the ad that went out when uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think 85% of the community voted in favor of the TRE. And so... <coughs> Uh, it shows you uh, the the projects. The the next uh, page, page six, uh, it's just a, a further breakdown. Uh, page seven was the facility committee meeting that was held right after we did the TRE. So it's just kind of a historical uh, data for you to see. <clears throat> and uh, then finally we get to I th I guess what what this meeting is all about on page eight. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Fernando. And the first first projects that you're going to see are our TRE projects. And let me just uh, quickly tell you, board members, that so far, when we compare the budget to actual costs and, and some of the contracts that have already been awarded, and the and, and all the the professional fees, we're roughly hitting about approximately six hundred thousand dollars in savings as opposed to what we were budgeted. Okay, so so I'll turn this over to to Fernando and Mr. Leek if uh, if you can chime in on the conversation. 
good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'll be talking about right now, for now, just on the facilities construction projects update regarding the, uh, just on the TRE projects for now, and what we presented uh, pretty much just an, out, uh, an updated on uh, where we add on the projects. Uh, for example, um, we got a pace, we pretty much completed, it's gonna go, uh, it's gonna go to the board of uh, April the 3rd, when this coming in, so we can, it's, uh, so we can go ahead and turn it in. It's pretty much substantially completed. We just received, uh, not too long ago, the, uh, the certificate of occupancy. So the building is pretty much ready to go. Right now, the building, uh, we're still going to go over the next 30 days doing the punch list items. Okay, uh, as far as the cost, these ones are uh, rough estimates right now. We don't have the final numbers, but as you can see right now, we're below our estimated budget. My estimate is about 300000 so far to date on this project under budget. Excuse me, real quick. Do we have anything where we can put on the Just a minute. We're, we're going to go to have discussion at the end of the meeting, so we can wait, please. I'd this appreciate is not a discussion, it. Thank you very sir. much. It's a question go of ahead. why we don't have it. Are we, uh, is a, Okay, is the on. public aware of what we're looking at, like we've done before in other meetings? So will you put it on the screen? Did you do that? If we don't. We don't have that on, to be showing them. Then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Porter, uh, we're going to take it to the board, <coughs> and also on the April third board meeting. Excuse me a minute, sir. Uh, I can. I can. We can. If we can get that um, going here, we, we can put that page on there. Uh, you know, yeah, there's no problem there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Go ahead, Fernando. Yes. <coughs> Okay, if we're talking about that's on the two band uh, choir halls that we're working on. Uh, next to that it will be the soccer fields, the turf soccer fields. Right now, uh, back in um, 2016, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Lopez, 2000 is April 2016, we completed Lopez. Okay, uh, it's been completed. Porter was completed in February of 2017. At Lopez, right now we're ready to recommend also substantial completion on Hannah, on this April third board meeting. Uh, Rivera, that's under construction right now. It's roughly about twenty-five percent completed. Uh, um, if I may, for, uh, yes, Mr. Sir. Real here, just want to make a comment. We didn't meet with uh, the representatives of Paragon, um, <clears throat> and what we're trying to do is so we don't have any downtime. We want to get, we want to move the projects along while, like we're getting Rivera on board, and then of course, we need to get out of pace because of the of the facility over there and make room for us to. So we want to go there and and then keep all the projects. This will pro provide some savings for the district because of the no need for extensive mobilization of the equipment. So uh, that's that's the plan, and so we're gonna we may come to you and, and on, on, a, on a hurry up mode, depends on, you know, we, we get good weather and, and, and the conditions are right for us to move forward with the project. But we, we've got them all kind of lined up. And there are some savings, uh, just estimated savings, uh, um, roughly about a couple of hundred, a couple of hundred thousand dollars on those, on those uh, soccer fields. Okay. okay, if I may move on, on, on uh, I guess, Pace right now, like Mr. Sanchez is it's, uh, uh, saying, is commenting on, on, on that, is Pace will be coming in uh, within two weeks. That's our goal to start. Start about a couple of weeks in there. We'll be breaking ground um, um, on that property. Uh, moving on to uh, Bestado, uh, the four-lane track. The, on the, on the, on the four-lane tracks, in which is Bestado, Lucio, and Vela, the state of right now, it's roughly about 75% completed uh, irrigation. The track has been completed. Uh, they're ready uh, to start doing hydro seeding. And uh, probably it'll be completed somewhere, um, I will say by May. We'll be done with, with uh, the state of Lucio, uh, we're trying to project timing uh, for get it advertised within as soon as we get it the um the, the csp approval from the board we're submitted so we're going to start advertisement that'll take 40 about 45 days roughly okay. so somewhere in june you know the board meeting of june we'll get it also uh advertised we got we do have 
plants, you know, pretty much ready. And <clears throat> the veterans restroom, that's pretty much on hold. Right now, we're just waiting uh, approval. And Mart uh, Martin and Morningside, they're, the canopies on both uh, projects, they're complete. And that's it. And uh, on the following page, on page nine, uh, these are just budgeted numbers. They may differ a little bit of what you see over here. Uh, Mary's a little bit conservative on this, and so we actually do not post any of these until the, the budgeted amounts until the projects are complete. So, for example, uh, when, when we're done with, with PACE and it's completed, that number will change on this, on this one page. So this is just budgeted amounts, and, and you know, down at the bottom, it says 180. Can you see it, Mary? Okay, it says 186, like we were going to be short, but I already explained to you we're about 600 thousand dollars up on the savings here so things will you know are gonna hopefully uh, balance out at the end <clears throat> then so those are the T TRE projects I think we're right on schedule I think we we're we're um, telling our public uh, uh, this is what we advertise this is what we're taking care of uh, the next uh, uh, page is the <coughs> uh, the issue on the uh, for for the for the community is we uh, uh, when I, we adopted our budget um, we the the board actually also included in the budget was to um, bring back the eleven and a quarter pennies on the INS site. Um, and so here are the projects and there are the line items that you see there. Uh, we wanted to, to specify these line items to be sort of general. For example, uh, if, you, if you go down to school renovation projects, new schools, replacement of schools. We kind of left that uh, pretty open. And then uh, next to the last, school roofing, HVAC, lighting replacements, and upgrades. So we're giving ourselves enough latitude here so in case new, new things develop, we can use these resources. One of the things that I, we met yesterday and the day before is I want to make sure that, that some of the things that we may be budgeting, for example, to the maintenance department are not part of these, these items here. So I don't want to use 199 money when we have these kinds of monies already set aside and they'll free up some, some more local resources rather than, than using the money we raised. Uh, um, the bottom of that, that, that page there uh, was advertised, and you see uh, it, it shows, can you point, Mary, with your hand there, or just the, uh, on the bottom of that page, uh, going from the highest tax rate to the lowest, and you, you find BISD, one of the lowest, uh, probably up at the, 25 largest school districts in the state with one of the lowest tax rates. Uh, <clears throat> then the following, the, 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 the following page was simply to show the board uh, the mechanics of what we did, the moving the original TRE funds, the 11 and a quarter pennies over to the MNO, brought us in 24 million. We had to take six mil, 16 million on that to pay back the bonds, left us with aid, which we started some of the TRE projects. Then you came back and, uh, and put in, put in uh, 11 and a quarter pennies on the INS side. So that released all the 24 million on the MNO side. And those $24 million is what we're using to fund the current projects and future projects. Then here I turn it over to, to Fernando. So you can you, here are all the projects uh, that uh, were specified uh, when we raised uh, the 11 and a quarter pennies. By the way, uh, we were at Region 1, and uh, when I explained what we had done, this same conversation uh, to all the CFOs, from the, they were all surprised, and they were like, how, do you, how did Brownsville do that? Uh, we're in the best position uh, to leverage our resources than anybody else, because I do not see any new monies coming from Austin in terms of IFA, EDA, and those kinds of things. So we have positioned ourselves fairly well to do uh, the current projects and future projects coming out of our own resources. Go ahead, Fernando. Thanks, sir. 
Uh, as, we can, as we can see on the next two pages, um, 12 and 13, there's a, a pretty much a summary of all the projects that we have ongoing related to the tax maintenance note or the tax rate increase uh, over these projects, starting with the HANA, the HANA upgrades, the HVAC upgrades at HANA. Right now we have the project, it's ongoing. We have the construction development, which is the construction plan, certain development with roughly about 50% uh, completion on that. We talked to, uh, we've been talking to uh, um, campus personnel there. Uh, we've done a little bit of research. We have to kind of upgrade a little bit when we started. We did some more findings. We took our uh, material testing company so we can do more research as far as um, if we have any, uh, any type of um, toxic materials or something like that that will be there. So everything is, is being uh, outlined on that. Uh, next to that, it will be uh, design build, which it takes a lot of the other HVAC projects. And we have right now, we've done interviews with two companies. They're actually, uh, uh, they're kind of helping us with that. So we have their evaluations. We got their cross proposals on, on, those, two, uh, on those two companies. So we're pretty much up to date uh, with those two items. We're making decisions as far as where we're going to go from, from that. Uh, roof replacements, we engage. Uh, it, it, this is just, I'm, I just want to add that uh, we show these, these are kind of like pilot projects, so we did not assign the entire district. We, we went uh, eight, eight and six, uh, and basically the same amount of square footage for, for all of them, and uh, we do have some, some cost analysis that were provided from each of the uh, of the of the firms as to uh, what the fees are going to be as well as uh, the actual construction costs. Okay, <coughs> moving on to the roof replacements, I went ahead and engaged <coughs> also with uh, about four con four design teams in particular for these to <coughs> kind of help us to design uh, these new projects that are going to be coming <coughs> up. We got in total about. But 11 projects that we have, that's what based on priority ones. We have some more, but right now we're concentrating on those 11 projects. Uh, we have companies uh, anywhere from uh, Armco, PBKs, uh, Amtec, and GMS on those uh, projects. On, um, uh, on the parking lot renovations, we also engage with uh, some engineering firms. And uh, right now we're in the pretty much committee. We've done our surveys on the properties. We've done our soils analysis. And right now they're in the design phase of, the, of each project. Um, then we got canopies. <coughs> on canopies, I, we have also engaged with engineering firms, two engineering firms that will help us with the designing of these, on the, we're doing either uh, we do <coughs> partially repair those canopies or we'll do full replacement of the canopies. I do have uh, scheduled meetings for uh, starting tomorrow and, vis and, and do another walkthrough with each, each company and so we can evaluate a little bit closer, go in detail, and specifically go and, and see what, uh, what, what are the needs. Um, and then we have uh, other projects, which is um, the ITV studio. Let me interrupt you here, yes. Fernando. Dr. Sandaga, did you have a, a comment or two to make on where you might want to relocate the, the ITV or any statement? Well, we have been discussing that, uh, and I think uh, Mr. Uh, Villarreal has been working on looking at the back area of the school district, the south side of BISD central building as the best location to set up the uh, studio. And we do have space there right now. We have old warehouses with probably a lot of obsolete materials. So we are looking at, at that as the prime location. It's close to the district office. It's close to many schools. It's central location. And it will also free up Porter High School to have a little more room for other media type uh, classes and, and projects that they may have. 
Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Yeah, it's like uh, Dr. Mendez pretty much said in there. Right now, we already engaged with our administration on the uh, on the TV studio. We talked about it. We went to the first uh, um, uh, talks as far as where the needs. Uh, we also talked to the engineer. Uh, sorry, the, to the architect involved in the project, and we're coming into you know looking at the location. What will be the best option for them in there? So it's it's an ongoing uh, project. Uh, moving into the interior facility assessment, uh, as it stands right now, we've done all the walkthrough assessments per campus, what we got on the listing. Right now they're working. Uh, we've done also a survey of uh, what are their other needs that the, actually the principals may have, other issues on every single campus, and it's been assessed. Uh, we're, right now we met last week uh, on Thursday and uh, we discuss as far as the pretty much projecting the reporting, how is it gonna come out in the evaluation and will be the costing on, on these projects. Um, the, Hena, the, the gymnasium at Hannah, uh, right now is in construction development. We met also with uh, campus personnel and um, athletics as well. So we come into what will be the program for this building and we have done a couple of renderings so we can show the school what it will look like, and we came to a conclusion, and it's been decided on, on that part. Um, the same stadium upgrades, that's ongoing. We're uh, still waiting a little bit of response from, from administration on that. Uh, CT renovations and the clear water, I'll put them together. Right now, we just got cost proposals from uh, lab, tech, you know, lab uh, companies that will be uh, assessing the building as far as what do we have there. And that's pretty much what we had. Uh, as you can see, on Rivera, it's been completed. That's a Rivera, the interior uh, practice field. It's been completed. And the, the FNS warehouse is still on the talks on, uh, in our side. And then the same thing on page 14, there's just the budgetary amounts that we were, whenever these projects are completed, just like we're doing with TRE projects, we'll, we'll adjust those numbers to meet the actual cost. <clears throat> Flipping over to <clears throat> tab uh, six, uh, I wanna thank, uh, I think, Luis. Well, okay, that's fine, but page 15. Page 15, on page 15, is Luis here? I think, where's, where's Luis, I, I thought I saw him, anyway, he, he helped us with this. He understands the, whatever these digital terminologies are. Anyway, we did an analysis. This is was simply a. Uh, we and went before out. you move on, can, can you introduce the item because I okay, don't. Okay, I'm sorry. It. Yeah. Okay, you're okay. way ahead. Of this me. this <laughs> stadium okay. upgrades. Stadium no. upgrades. And what are we upgrading specifically? The, in this the school board. I'm sorry. Oh, the, so we're looking at a new school yeah. board panel. I'm assuming system every, I'm and everything. I was assuming everybody knew what okay. I was talking about, but I'm board, sorry. Board. It, it is a scoreboard. Well, school board. Okay. School, school board or, or scoreboard? Or the digital, the digital <laughs> display. <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, uh, we we're bringing it forth, and and what. What you see is in, in, in the yellow is what one, when one proposal has that the others do not. Okay, so I, you know I, we passed it on to somebody else. You notice, like I, I just give an example, Nepco. You see that on line the third description, the ten years see that they have there, and then there's a little bit different than all the others. And then if you go to VCR now, everything. Uh, for the next two pages, pages 15, 16, 17, and 18, that's where they differ as opposed to the other two proposals, okay? And then, of course, the dollar amounts are different for each of those proposals as well. It ranging from anywhere from, from 800 and some to a, a million four. Uh, so we, we're bringing it, bringing it uh, to you just so that you uh, can look at it and then whatever the wishes of the board are, we'll, we'll, we'll move from there. Is it gonna be your recommendation for one of these? Absolutely. Okay, okay. and do you know which uh, one yes, yet? Sir. Or are you gonna have uh, made the decision? Well, we're gonna be bringing a recommendation at the next uh, board meeting for you. Uh, I think one of the 
uh, one of the important points is uh, what is the cost to take down what we have and to put up as well. So that is a critical piece of uh, budget as, uh, to be okay. considered. So we'll be bringing a recommendation. Obviously, uh, uh, Mr. Sanchez has done a thorough analysis of which one would be in our best interest. Uh, it may be a little more costly, but we'll move forward. And we'll be bringing a recommendation at this coming board meeting. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, do you have a, an idea now as who you were looking for or which direction you're leaning? I'd rather just wait till I have my well, final discussions with the superintendent. Yes. I thought this was, this was the facility meeting well, well, to discuss uh, it and to know but, so that we don't uh, have to ask the questions at the meeting because you're not giving us the information now. I thought we were saying well, we're, we're well, going to come back at the end. But well, we're going to come back at the end. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. And no I, I le do want to say that the reason why we want to bring it to this meeting is that we believe we have enough time so that the scoreboard can be up for graduation and that parents may, who of graduating students will benefit from having uh, the scoreboard up. So this is the intent of bringing it this meeting. So, well, that's at the end. Okay. Um, on page 19, we, we have asked uh, some of the, the departments to, to give us uh, I think we've got maintenance, and I think we've got athletics, and I think we've got fine arts, and uh, transportation, some of the, the bigger departments to, to kind of uh, sort out what you want to do, what do you want to look at in the next five years. Some of it is uh, kind of like a Christmas list, some of our needs, and, and so we had to kind of go through that. Like on the first one on page 19, though, uh, I, I just want to point out you see number two, roofing repairs, we're already on that one. And then number three, HVAC, we're already on that one. Chiller is part of the HVAC, we're on that one. Parking lots number five, we're on it. Light conversions, we're on that. Athletic facility repairs, we're kind of on that as well. So some of this, were, it's already on board. And so we, we just wanted to, to show you what some of those plans are. Uh, <clears throat> Then if you move over to uh, transportation on page, well, it would be this one, not have a page, so be page 21. Okay. Uh, and transportation, of course, a big ticket item here that they want is a, a new warehouse, a new facility over there, seven and a half million. So, but there are some things that, uh, that they have. Um, the first line item there, uh, he's been doing, uh, how many buses, Mary, on, on the lease? How many have we been buying? 10? 20? 25 buses. So now he wants to jump it up by 35, which would be a new. On these, we go five years. Is it five years or three years? Three, five years? Five years, they belong to us. And uh, on it, rather than spending 100000 per bus right up front, we, we stagger it over, over a period of time, so it gives us a little more leverage on using our resources. Good. <clears throat> uh, on page 22, then you have athletics, and I guess <coughs> athletics is into finance because we know in finance we have tier one, tier two, and tier three kinds of things. So. I thought it was because we bought a lot of turf. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so. So uh, tier one, uh, I, I just kind of look some of the things that, you know, we, we just said we might bring this, uh, the scoreboard to you. So number one is kind of like on, uh, we're going to be looking at same stadium uh, uh, and the track. We had budgeted at the track and it, we still have that money allocated. The track really needs some work at the same stadium. And it's going to run us about somewhere in the neighborhood, like a resurfacing, like a I mean, just t patching it up about 150,000 for probably about 250, you can do the whole track because the foundation, the base, it's all good. It's got the curbing in already, so that that's a, a very possible thing to do. Um, and then all the uh, fencing that we have uh, at Sam Stadium uh, in stages, and then we have uh, that one we're on at Sam Stadium structural repairs ADA. That's what we have in mind when we propose the 11 and a quarter pennies stadium upgrades. That's part of all that. 
And then <clears throat> you see uh, tier two, uh, some, of the, some of the items that they're looking at, uh, a lot of tennis courts and resurfacing and fencing. And, and of course, right now, I think the biggest thing that I hear or I see every day on my, on my emails or, or getting uh, outdoor clocks for baseball, softball, uh, and I'm missing one. Soccer. Soccer. Remind me. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, uh, I, I, if we do it for one campus, I think we, I, I want to be able to do them all rather than pick and choose. And I think this is, uh, my estimate is uh, it's going to run us maybe for all three of those items, maybe like 45, 50,000. Depends, you know, uh, who bids and who doesn't. So all in all, probably run us about two, three hundred, two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars to to get them all done. Good. <clears throat> but that's that's I think of all the things that that I hear from athletics, that's one of them. Uh, from that's and of course all these sports are now okay, but we, we can't do it now because we don't we haven't set the money aside and we haven't budgeted. But it's not that we're not paying attention to the needs of, of, of the schools, but just. Uh, there's some other more pressing things at the moment, and so we're looking at that. So you, you, you can, I don't want to go through, I just want to highlight some of the things that, that I, I think are, are fine. And then <clears throat> on page 24, you have your fine arts, and you can see the staggered of that. Uh, um, we run and do all the, the, the facilities and, you know, um, I guess my comment, we're doing all the bands and so on, but then we're still doing a, a performing arts center. So those are the big ticket items, I think, that you'll see there across, across those presentations there. <clears throat> and then, uh, Dr. Sendejas, uh, you want to, on this one, on FSN uh, provision two, you want me to go ahead and just go ahead. Go. All right. <clears throat> we're, we're a point, uh, uh, right now with uh, uh, provision two is we we did it I guess sometime back in 91 92 we did some some forms that students take home to be eligible for free or reduced lunch well we got to the point where right now we don't qualify anymore so we only got two choices one is we go out and 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 do every single student and send these forms and collect them back and see what comes out of that. Or we move into what is called CEP, Community Eligibility Participation. And, and of course, there's issues here. Uh, this measures economically disadvantaged students. Mr. Sanchez, yes. could you <clears throat> kind of move back a little bit just because the public watches this too and they okay. probably don't know what you're talking okay. about. Can you explain a little bit in layman's terms what you're talking about and then get into the details? Okay. okay. I appreciate it. If you uh, what has happened is, is uh, we, we get federal monies uh, for the, the child nutrition program. And, and one of the ways we get money is uh, students have to be eligible and qualify for, and, and it's you know, economically disadvantaged. But it spills over to the academic side. Uh, and, and so there is where the issue is, okay, so if we have a number and say we're 96% economically disadvantaged, okay, but we really haven't tested, is that a true percentage? So we're down to, to where now the, the, we only have two choices about how can we determine that 96% is the reliable economic disadvantage percentage for our student body throughout the district. So uh, the talk at Region 1 is the community is getting better, wealthier, uh, income is higher, according to their sampling that they did. And so chances are uh, the economic the disadvantaged group may be lowered, okay? So going the CEP route, Transitioning into that helps us because they have what is called some multiplier, 
raises us up to about close to 98 percent, and we still maintain the economically disadvantaged number for federal funding on the FNS side. But at the campus level, you may find that your economically disadvantaged group or subgroup has declined. If you were at 70 percent, you may drop to 67. So, so that means those campuses would have to perform three percentage points better, okay? And so that's kind of like the, the issue here. Uh, I have set up, uh, I, I had asked, I, I was at a finance council meeting on Friday, so on April 4th, I have uh, Connie Lopez, who's the CFO over there for Region 1, Carmen Ocañas, who is in charge of food service, and Dr. Carcino, who is the curriculum person, we're going to meet, I'm bringing uh, them here uh, with the superintendent, the area, um, area people, area superintendents, and we're going to go through this. Uh, most of the Region 1 districts have already gone through this. Uh, uh, the, the largest one closer to us that was uh, PSJA. I, I spoke to Janet Robles, the CFO over there, and she said, well, yeah, it impacted, but it was very minimal in the terms of the actual drop in economically disadvantaged. And as far as the test scores came out, they weren't that far off. So it, it's an issue here. There are some advantages for us because <coughs> uh, we continue to uh, make everybody not have to pay for their meals, number one. Number two, a lot of the state compensatory money, at risk money that we get is based on this data. And so we would get more money there. And then, of course, uh, the percentage of uh, economic disadvantage also hits a little bit of the E-rate percentage. Right now, we're about a 90, 90, 90 percent, 10. And so maybe it goes up to maybe 92, 93. I, do, I don't really know at the, at the moment. I don't have the real data. But those are some of the considerations. Those are the things that I think from that we we need to to look at, and we got away. All right. So the district stands to make five or six million dollars more in FNS services. We we may hit six seven million dollars on state compensatory. Uh, we may get a little bit more money over there. Versus, uh, is this going to impact ourselves meeting the meeting the uh, minimum standards or whatever? whatever, I know they're transitioning into the A, B, C, D thing here shortly. As a district is coming on, then as the campus is not going to be till later on. So it has far-reaching implications, not just financial, and that's why we want to have this meeting on April 4th. What does CEP stand for, please? Community Eligibility Program. Thank you. <coughs> Then the next on page, or be the next tab, because I don't, it's not numbered, it's on tab nine. Um, after some of the data is coming in, looks like you see the local, well, we have our, our values already, so the, the one that is down, it's gonna be down is that one from the state. We're approximately decreasing about $7 million in state funding. <coughs> so, and that's a, that's a trend. Uh, it used to be the state would send school districts 60 percent. Now they're down to 40. Okay, so it's not just BISD; it's all the districts in the state of Texas. There's less less money coming in from from Austin. Um, then on, uh, on go ahead. Mr. Sanchez, I think it's also important to bring to the board that while this is also a facil uh, budget meeting, and Mr. Sanchez has brought up major budget issues. We're also reviewing the smaller budget issues that are on the table. For example, there's some departments that want us to evaluate whether uh, there should be a, a higher level of stipends in some departments, or some departments don't have stipends and others do. So we're also looking uh, to present to you in the near future recommendations regarding um, uh, budget uh, salary implications, and those are not we're not discussing those yet. We're reviewing them as we right. move forward. Yeah, we, we, our intention is to bring, maybe at least have at least two meetings when we do the compensation plan. We go the first round with the compensation plan, see what the board members feel like, like doing and, and see whether we can afford it. And then we come back 
and, and do the final, the final uh, uh, compensation plan. Uh, yeah, um, I, and I, we had some grievances, grievances and, and appeals to, to my office, and, and I say, well, you know, uh, personally and professionally, I, 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 I'm not into singling out one person, one group, or it's either we do it for everyone in that pay grade or we don't do it at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, we throw everything out of sync, and then, then we, we have all these grievances come in. We never stop. Uh, and then, then, no, Mr. Sanchez, you're also looking at, the, I know we talked about it in the last meeting, about the, uh, the extra position in the police department as well, th right? Those 21 positions are already in, yes, sir. But also the uh, administrative level as well? I think we were saying yes. we're going to get... We're, we're looking into all that. Okay. And that'll be part of the compensation <coughs> plan when we, when we bring it back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one was there was a, a request for athletic uh, purchasing process. I asked uh, Delia and, 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 uh, and Mr. Doc, uh, Coach Chavez to kind of put some things together as to how that is done. And, uh, you know, we do them the same way. Um, and basically, uh, like any other bid, um, anytime, uh, you know, there's a misconception uh, that we always have to go to the low bid. That's not, that is not the, what the law says. The law says the best value, okay? Price is one, only by one consideration. There are about eight other items, criteria that we use in looking at it. Such things as service, such things as quality, reputation, how, to, how has a particular company uh, um, provide services or, or commodities to the district. Uh, the second thing on the athletic stuff is that uh, warehouse <coughs> warehousing had a couple of vehicles down, and so a couple of years back, and we're trying to get them some vehicles, but there was a, a delivery issue, a delivery directly to, to for athletics. They needed the equipment like now, and so uh, with Coach Chavez and, and all the ADs, the idea says, well, have have the information, have all these goods and services, come to the stadium, we'll eva evaluate it, make sure that the goods are conforming according to the PO, and then from there, uh, uh, Mr. Chavez is here if you he, want to uh, ask him, but uh, from there then they, they themselves uh, distribute to the particular campuses. Um, so, that's kind of pretty much, and then you have, uh, there on that page, you, you have all the levels of approval. Uh, so uh, that's just a short uh, uh, blurb on, on what we, how we handle that. Uh, then landscaping. Uh, I, I think, um, Mr. Sanchez, on this one, this was a request by Dr. Atkinson, so I don't know if there were any questions I'll wait till the end. at the okay. end. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to make sure that everybody understood. Yes. yes. So on landscaping, <coughs> could you please, so uh, let's hold off on it. At the, at the very end, I'm going to let everybody get their fingers all bloody looking at the thorny plants I'm bringing it in so they can look at them. Yeah. You know, so I don't want to kind of close the meeting and say, here it is, I want you to look at some of the stuff you can just pick out and find in the montes and this and that over there because some of them are really nice ornamental plants. So I don't, which doesn't have to be real formal or anything like that. Yeah. And there's some people in the valley that are really experts in this and they don't really cost anything. They just do it because they love it. Right. Uh, but if we go on, to, if uh, yeah. it's all right with and the city, uh, and, uh, or if you want to go on and have some questions now, let the city come in. Uh, Dr. Sendekas, you want to do that? Or? Well, uh, if you don't mind, maybe the board has any questions regarding what was here, already this discussed. This is the city's part, and let yes. someone go. Okay, okay. That would be Ms. good. Ms. Fettis, I mean, Ms. Uh, Benia, uh, you had a couple of uh, Mr. A Mr. question Cowan. on uh, one item here uh, was the scoreboard. Yeah. Before we start, maybe okay. you let the city go, because we may have, you know, 30 minutes worth of questions. Okay. And you let okay. Well, yeah, that's okay with them. Right. Yeah. Uh, let them leave. Yeah, let's go all the way through. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Well, and, the, and the other thing, the landscaping doesn't. We don't have to take okay. any time. It's just you know, I want you to look we, at. We it. can wait to the end. Of yeah, what okay. You said. Yeah. And then go ahead. The, if the, if the last if item was a yes, presentation sir. discussion of historical exemption. Yeah, and the city could, if, if Mr. Bellis or somebody wanted to come in well, and talk. Well, what I, I and I asked, I asked her. I said, well, you know. We really don't need a lot of explanation. I, I said, just send me 
send me the send me the, the final data and then so um, originally I, 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 I just got this right before we okay, came so to the meeting well, I got some notes on here, and I don't want anybody to see my notes. <laughs> I can't well, could make you, it out anyway. So. Could, you erase, could you erase your notes and let us have a copy, please? We can simplify. Could, Dr. Zendekas, could you, the, we got a handout the other day. Uh, when we met informally yeah. with the city. They wanted to discuss this over there, the president and I. And so they had some best lists of some properties, some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, and if you could make sure that every board Do member gets a copy of that, that would be good. Yeah. Let me see. Excuse me. Does she have an extra we copy can, where we, we can, can make a copy? We can. Uh, because if we, before you go on, I've asked a thousand times. It's my eighth, my I think eighth year, tenth year. When someone's going to discuss something and they give you a copy, please be courteous to give it to us so we're always the on the same page. Plan. So that's why I like to have. He's got a copy here. So I like to have a copy to look. We'll, at we'll get you a copy, ma'am. Thank you. Before we start, well, it, well it, they don't have it. There's nothing they can do about it now. It's been ten years. Okay, so thank you, ma'am. I'm about yeah. Okay. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Or good well, afternoon. You can put it on the. Mary, it's on there already. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Mirna Leal. I'm a planner with the City of Brownsville. Uh, I know you've you've asked for a copy. What we are here to present today is the 2018 preservation plan. I know this is going to go up to the Board of Trustees. Um, the preservation plan itself is going to be uh, submitted to City Commission. It's already on their agenda for Tuesday, April 3rd. Uh, once it is approved, that is when we are allowed to go ahead and make the copies made public. Uh, because it has not been approved yet, I am unable to pass out multiple copies. I did provide one uh, for Mr. Sanchez because as the chief financial uh, CFO, we wanted to verify that all the information that we are presenting today, that he was okay with the numbers. Um, what I'm doing today is just a very brief. Okay, real quick. So then the, what we're showing there right now on the screen, you're not going to show it on the public screen because you don't want the public to know about it yet? Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, it needs to be approved first. As per okay. our ordinance, it needs so to be approved. So then we're not going to show it on, on the meeting because our meeting is televised. Yes, I understand So that. we're not going to put that on there until you guys get it approved? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I just want to yes. make sure that's clear. Ma'am, it's still tentative to their approval regardless if they show it or not. Okay, you want to hold off until that. Thank you. Watch. Just keep it going. So we've had a few meetings with, with BISD, with Dr. Zendejas, Mr. Cowan, and Mr. Sanchez. Um, what we have been working with, we're, we're trying to get to a, a middle point. Originally, our plan, our proposal, our historic preservation plan has 116 properties. Uh, what this plan does, it helps protect, since 1971, this plan has helped protect historical properties in the city of Brownsville. People who qualify, who meet certain criteria in their properties, um, get tax exemptions, whether it's a 50% tax exemption or 100% tax exemption, whether it's local, at a state level, or at a national level. Um, after meeting with BISD, um, we have trimmed down the list. We are, are in the middle of negotiating somewhere where we can meet in the middle and, and get their approval. So what I'm presenting to you today is just a very quick overview. Um, we have reduced our list by 20 properties. So instead of it being 116, we are down to 96 properties. Uh, this bringing the total savings uh, about $132,561. Uh, if this is something that uh, the city does not feel comfortable with, if it's something that they want to you know, push forward or maybe ask more questions, we are more than welcome with that. We are willing to work with you, however it is that you would like for us to, to continue with this project. Um, but this is, this is something that has happened every year. Uh, BISD is not the only entity that does have to approve this. It goes through Cameron County, the Brownsville Navigation District, TSC, um, and, uh, and the city of Brownsville as well. Define savings. So what every savings? every property uh, is taxed, right? Everybody, every property has to has to pay a certain tax. Um, when I'm calling it a savings, because it's it's more money that wouldn't be uh, kept from BISD itself. So if a property pays hundred dollars in taxes every year, right, that would be wonderful. Um, the state multiplies that by three, and then that's what BISD gets. So that's why if you see the 136,785 times three is the $410,000 amount uh, that BISD would be approving for tax exemptions for the citizens of Brownsville. Originally that amount was well over half a million dollars. So by trimming down our list and by removing some of these properties, we are lowering that amount itself. Um, since the entity extends to gain the 132,000. 
Is that what is that what that means? Because that's not something that they're not going to be able. Uh, Miss Spania, could you please speak into your mic? Because I really can't. Don't think anybody can hear you. What did you want to ask? No, that's what I was asking. So the hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars savings is being saved by who? That is that is money that would be given or not given, but uh, BISD oh, wouldn't lose out on in that. In other words, money. that's a gain. Okay. Yes, it's a total impact it's, 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 savings it's, that what you're talking it's about. It's a gain. Uh, yes, it's that's a, what I want to make sure that, that it, I'm understanding that that would be a gain. And Thank that's you. why I yes. wanted to reserve the presentation to myself because I'm the one who's doing the numbers. Uh, it roughly, was about 10 million taxable amount. Just so that you understand the principle here, it was 10 million. They come back to us and say, look, we're pulling these 20 properties out. It's roughly about $4 million and some change, okay? So it leaves around $6 million of taxable value that we're going to, to tax. And so what we do is, all right, we take our, divide that number by 100 times the tax rate, and that's the actual tax that we should have taxed these buildings, okay? And so, so that's the money that we are not receiving from the state because it's a ratio of three to one. But it's actually a four to one because we, we give up the local collection plus the three dollars that we, we don't get from the state. So that number is multiplied times four. That's where she and I differ. And that's why I, I said I had my calculations here and, and I said I scribble on them. And, and, you know, I didn't get them till about maybe an hour before the meeting, and I didn't have time to really drill down on this. But that's basically it. So Mr. Th Sanchez, you, she's not wrong. It's just she's got no. the wrong figure. If you don't multiply no, no, by no, four, the, the, the concept, figure would be the same. The, that's the concept is the same. Concept the concept is the same. Is the, same. It, the dollar may differ a little bit, but that's, that's not, not a big issue. It's just the concept itself that I'm explaining. That's... Uh, Atkinson, do you want to ask a question? Yes, a few questions. Um, this uh, city historical exemption project is is under the city of Brownsville. Yes, ma'am. It is an ordinance that has been. It was. I think it started back in 1971, and it's been updated every year. It, and you have set criteria to evaluate properties. Yes, ma'am. Uh, both the city of Brownsville. Uh, I mean, sorry, also at the state level and also at the national level. We have all three uh, designations within the city. So we had previously 116 properties, and you said you were able to trim it down to 96 properties. Does that mean that 20 properties were pretty much just? given a uh, just allowed to get this exemption no so over the years any property owner who would like to qualify or uh, who would like to apply for this their property needs to qualify so they need to meet certain criteria did someone of, of historic significance live there how old is your home how well kept is your home is it still you know of course most homes need remodeling after a certain amount of time if you did remodel did you get the appropriate permits does it look like it did his, is it historically uh, does it look the way it did a few years ago or not a few years ago but 50 100 years ago original. or you know is it in the original state all of these things every single property uh, regardless of where it's located or uh, who the owner is or any of that they have to meet it anywhere on the state um, Sometimes there's properties that come to us at a city level, at a local level, and we say no, but then that property owner will go to the state and the state will say yes. Of course, that's out of our hands at that point, but we have to respect the fact that they did get, receive that designation. So if they get a designation at the state uh, level, they can come back and appeal to you all and you all will grant it? Uh, we, we, they don't appeal to us, we just go ahead and take what the state tells us. Okay, so you automatically just say then they qualify? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I, I'm just curious about how those 20 properties then get removed. So what we, because we've met with BISD and uh, we, they let us know that they, you know, it was a lot of money and, and I get it. I, I understand that BISD wants to protect and uh, their assets and, and make sure that they're giving enough money back to their, to their district. Um, so we're working with them about, okay, you know, what are properties that have let the quality of their house go down? Uh, we do have a process every year where we send out letters to property owners saying you need to show us proof because the money that they are saving on taxes mm -hmm. is supposed to go back into their homes. If they are not showing us proof, if if this ho if these homes have gone down in quality, if they haven't paid any attention to them, then of course we reserve the right to remove them from that list. 
the properties that we have chosen are properties that, uh, after discussing with, with uh, the members that we met with uh, two weeks ago and a week ago, we go ahead and, and say, yes, we recommend for, we have no objections if BISD decides not to approve them. And next year, uh, for, tw for 2019, I can only assume that this list will get tighter because we are gonna be a lot stricter with our, with our properties and, and uh, the proof that they need to show. Okay, so then I have a question then for the superintendent um, on this list of 96 properties uh, because I'm hearing that this will get presented to us for approval and the board can decide to approve some, all, none. Is that the case? Well, the, the if administration... If I may answer, we, didn't, we met the other day. Cesar Lopez was there and on his invitation I came so I want the board to know because he asked to meet with them. What was one and the second part of it is is that I think the biggest concern we had was something called substantial re re repair properties. The substantial uh, warehouses on Fronton or St. Charles Street, you know, million dollar, million if, and a half dollar warehouses. And, you know, they painted it, it looks really nice and everything else. It's an old great I, bus station, that over there. And, you know, and that was about 40% of all the tax, uh, what was it, uh, exemptions that were applied. And, you know, I mean, in terms of telling the story of Brownsville, which is, you know, sometimes we tell it through the history and sometimes we tell it to the through the architects. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it didn't really, so, you know, we said make some wise decisions. And, and I had at the meeting and, and, and here, just as chair of this facility meeting, uh, and I'm pretty sure Mr. Elizondo would go along with it. We want the administration to make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? And can you justify doing this in terms of our educational purpose here and what we're doing as a school system? And you know that remains to be said, and that's why the city is working very hard. But anyway, I, didn't okay. really, I hope that answered part of your question. No, it, it answered the majority of it, so I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. I have a question on that. Yes, uh, the 20 that you removed, let's say they go to the state because they don't know, they're not in agreement with them being removed, mm -hmm. and the state honors it, then they come back on. Am I hearing you correctly? Yes, but there would need to be there would need to be some significant work done to these properties. But if the state approves it, significant or not, because it's all run by human beings and opinions and words. So if somebody in the state, if they end up coming back with that, and let's say in your eyes, well, I didn't see you do much. How did you get this? That's not something you're going to be able to question. Am I correct? Well, we would need to have actual proof of them. No, no, doing no. Work. I mean, they show you proof that they got mm -hmm. that approved by the state. Am I hearing you say you have no choice but to honor that state? If the state approves it, yes, yes. we would have to. But we have no choice. We would have no choice okay. but to approve. That's the them. only question. If that you're saying if the state approves that the school system has no choice but to grant an exemption. No, no, the, city the, city, the city of Brownsville. The city of Brownsville. Okay, the city, city of Brownsville. Brownsville. Because, but you do because that the because BISD or any other it. entity no, that's can decide whether they want to approve anything or not, which is why we're trying to, to work and negotiate with you all. You know, okay. If there is a, a, a ballpark figure of what you would like to see for us, to, obviously, like I had spoken with Mr. Sanchez, it'd be great if we didn't have to approve any of this. But because it is through a sitting ordinance, then... And, and this... Uh, but put things in perspective, I think, and I'm, my figures, I believe are right because I got them from Mr. Sanchez. He's usually mm -hmm. pretty good. We're actually looking, by the time we get rid of the tax, look, look at the taxes we don't collect, and then the state matching fund, somewhere close to about $750,000 a year that we're out, not 500 and something thousand. I mean, it's more than what you were looking at. Uh, by taking some of this stuff off, it does reduce it down considerably, more than the 132,000 you're talking about. And so, I mean, no, that, that it's good that you're looking at this thing. But uh, I wait for the administration to make a recommendation, one, and a justification, you know, because I think that's very important. You know, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. And I know South Texas said no, right. you know. TSC so. hasn't, uh, TSC has, we haven't gone to them yet. Their meeting is at the end of April. And, and, and let me paraphrase this. This is a city ordinance. It's not something that the school district has to follow. If we choose to, to opt out, then we opt out. It's just a city ordinance. It's mm -hmm. a recommendation from the city, and we'll wait on what the recommendation from the administration is. But it's not an obligation for the school district that we have to follow. No, there's no, Thank I you. mean, yes. uh, it's been made very clear that the that BISD can choose to not approve right. this at all completely. Again, it's, and it's, I understand it's that. the city of Brownsville ordinance. It has nothing to do with the school district. Okay. And with that said, that means that we don't have to honor and they have to pay their taxes to the school district. Yes, ma'am. So I need the, the public to understand that, that it's not something we as a school board can decide, you know, everybody pays them fair across the state or we turn around and exempt certain entities. And so that's a choice as a school board as a whole. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. And that is why we present to all the different entities, like I said okay. earlier, such well, as Cameron County and TSC. 
I want to thank you for coming over and making your presentation. You don't need to go over to the individual properties. I know you had a handout for us the other day, and when you get it approved with the city, make sure you get it to us so we can see. And if you want to this do this, is a, actually the only slide. I didn't bring any other properties. No, no, I, know, I wanted but to keep we, it very we short don't expect and strictly to do that, to the but finances. I want to thank you very thank much you. for your presentation and for your kindness in coming over here and sharing this with us. Yes, you know, thank And the administration you. will be getting back with you as to what the recommendation yes. will be. Yeah, let me ask you. The, right. the, it goes to the next. City, city yes sir city commission okay. is on tuesday april 3rd mm -hmm. all right thank you ma'am thank you thank you ma'am I, I have oh, a sorry. question get some questions um oh, what what was mentioned here about the board making approval on some some of the pro properties no, that wasn't, that wasn't mentioned. we we have discussed with bi if i may I we have that's discussed what I, that's what the doctor atkinson had Let's ask. Go ahead, ma'am. That's why I'm asking. I didn't understand it. Yes. Now, ahead, I asked the question. I wanted to make sure that we're that I received the clarification from the superintendent that at this point, and we've already pretty much answered the the question. We want to work off of a recommendation from administration. Uh, because I'd hate for the board to pick and choose which properties okay, that's, to that's approve. What I, I'm sorry. That's, that's what I said. I, if I may add, uh, Go ahead, the the intent here is that BISD is interested in making sure it maximizes all its property, and and what we did is uh, we asked the city to help us look over all the properties. So this was kind of a, a review of the properties, some which we question. And, and I think it was also helpful for the city because they in turn also create their own reviews. So this was an effort to maximize on behalf of the school district the properties that we believe are questionable in terms of uh, uh, getting uh, the, the freedom not to pay any tax taxes. So uh, the city then does their work, but uh, we as a district have an obligation every year to review this. Yes. And this year we invited uh, Mr. Lopez and um, uh, Mr. Cowan uh, came to the meetings to so that we can un all understand and be on the same page. Yeah. That is that is ex exactly right. That is and exactly what we want as as a as the city of Brownsville. We want to know that whoever the entity is that we are reaching out for these approvals that you understand and that they have a say into what's going on. Uh, Mr. Sanchez has received a list of the recommended properties. We did review them. We, we have made notes about uh, what properties really don't deserve to be on there anymore. Um, limiting their terms as to how long they can be on there, that is something that already exists, but we can also we can work on that through reevaluating our ordinance. This is something that the city is really passionate about, and we are working very hard to ensure that every entity that we do go to has a say in it, so that we are all working together to not only preserve the historic properties of Brownsville that really tell the story of Brownsville, but also while protecting every entity on its own. If there are other recommendations for other properties that are on the list that has been provided at the first, second meeting, and Mr. Sanchez also has them, we will gladly hear them. I'm sorry, we will gladly hear them, and we will go ahead and see what it is you want us to do, and we will work with you. We are willing to accommodate whatever the requests of BISD are. And if I may, Coach, okay. uh, let me tell this to Coach. We can choose not to exempt any of them and have them all pay school taxes like the rest of the society, the rest of the yeah. people who own buildings. Absolutely. We as a district can choose the exemption is for the city taxes. It doesn't have to be for the school taxes. We as a board have that authority to bring in more money for our students. That's a choice we can do. Okay. One, one That's point a good observation. Mr. Rodriguez, go ahead. One point of clarification. Uh, you mentioned that uh, when you go all turn some people down that they could go to the state mm -hmm. uh, and then you had no recourse from that. Does the board have a recourse? The school board? Yeah. No, the state does have their own qualifying uh, criteria level. And so if, if, if the property, if the state feels, whoever is in that office feels that they meet that qualification, I guess if they can drop, cross off all of those squares or check off all of those squares, then they would qualify for that. And then we would say, okay, they no longer have to pay the state tax or whatever it is, whatever it is that, that they end up getting, whatever percentage they don't have to pay. Um, but we ha we've turned down properties where later go to the state and, and get approved. It is a very rare occasion. But it does happen. His question is: But I think his point: we're not we're obligated to give them the no. exemption, even if they got a national registry no, designation. No, sir. BISD, it's its own entity, we're not, and you we're can choose. We're not obligated to have. Yes, sir. Well, that's what I yeah. mentioned. Okay. I think yes. That that because the there's some properties that are relatively new. I mean, a lot newer than my house, and they're on the state uh, exemption list, and uh, they don't pay any taxes, and 
I mean, those are new properties that I don't understand, you know, how we recognize properties built in the 1900s or whatever. The minimum age is 50 years. Say again? The minimum age of a house or a property is 50 years for, in order for them to qualify. So you qualify, Joe. <laughs> and so do I. I'm, I'm not looking for my... The house, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, but the house. Oh, okay. <laughs> Won't qualify because we need substantial renovation, you know, so <laughs> that, that, that may be true with this. Uh, okay. But uh, on this, d just so people can, t two things I think that you might consider here, uh, at least it's for the administration and the board and uh, the city here, you know, w we could look at limiting the number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, for stuff that makes the national and the state registry, you know, there are benefits that go, uh, you know, essentially accrue to the property owner. You know, they, if the state, they'll come and give matching funds and money to do repairs. In some cases, on the national part, you go fix your house and do spend some money, and it's a tax credit. You're paying your taxes as you fix your home. You know, so there are other things that are going on. I think that the administration, and I would be very pleased, the administration would look at some way to work this so that we could have a limitation on some of the properties for, for time limit. On some of them, you know, should some stay forever and some not? And then, you know, if you want to, we could leave, a, if we have something, let's say, five years exemption and it just stays on, you don't need to come back every year to ask for it, you know, unless we decide to change our mind or something, uh, you know, and then if you want to add a property, you need to come back and talk to us. There's a lot of things we can do. We don't have to have this crisis every year, you know, because, but anyway, I'll take it from there. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Sir. Thank you. Uh, no, I don't have any of the questions for the for them. It's for the budget. Thank you for your presentation. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I guess you. it's going to be addressed to Mr. Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez, yes. Uh, well, first for Dr. Zendejas, uh, because at our last uh, curriculum meeting where we met with the students, uh, we had a lot of requests for additional programs, support, so forth, for our students that uh, that are AP, there are uh, our kids that are accelerated, GT students. We seem to have a lot of support for our at-risk and for supplemental programs for our struggling kids, but they were all asking for what can we do to help them with SAT, ACT prep, AP um, classes, and we hadn't heard yet what was being planned or what was being looked at. So as part of the budget, are we looking at that uh, closely or what well, are we doing? I, I am working with Ms. Peña. We have not gotten any recommendations from uh, curriculum department mm -hmm. in terms of what we're going to do. As, as you know, we get a lot of funding for at-risk students. Sure. We do not get a lot of funding for uh, right. the advanced students. Yes. And we would have to uh, bring to the board, uh, and we already do. Many of our schools already do some things on their own from their own budget to prepare the students or to develop a class to prepare the kids. Mm -hmm. But uh, from a district point of view, I do not have a recommendation at this time. And we'll be discussing this with uh, Ms. Berta Peña. Mm -hmm. uh, the email that you sent out today about PTEC, it's a, it's a welcome uh, you know, opportunity challenge for the district to at least have Hannah and Porter be uh, involved in the mix. But that also is going to entail uh, resources to help, uh, help the acceleration of those programs. So. That spurs again, you know, when we have to look at setting aside monies for some of our advanced kids or our kids that are doing well. Um, it's one of the concerns that parents that have taken kids to different charter schools because they feel that they are being, uh, they're being addressed at, the, at that level. Uh, and they seem to feel like we are not doing enough at that point. So this would be a good opportunity now that you have PTEC, we're still an early college high school district, uh, and that if we're promoting ACT, SAT, and AP support, it again shows that we're trying to uh, try to um, tend to our struggling student as well as to our student that wants to be commended and accelerated. So, um, but going to the questions, and Mr. Sanchez was going to step out for a second. So. Mr. Sanchez. <laughs> That's why I was asking the question for Dr. Zendejas. Give him some time to make a comment real quick. Mr. Sanchez, on page five of your, of your handout on the TRE, and this is something that I actually asked last year, um, so I'll ask again because I, I didn't get a real clear uh, picture of it, but under all schools, 
This is a tax ratification priority projects. It was safety and security resources and library resources. And I didn't see, and I look, went back to look at the library budget, there was not an increase. In fact, there was actually a decrease in the library budget last year. Um, so I was hoping that you all would revisit that and find out what are you doing new and approved that would have helped support this as a line item under the TRE. Well, uh, we have not added under the TRE monies for libraries, but we have given libraries. I know since 2015, libraries have received close to $80,000 or more for books and supplies, not necessarily are out of TRE monies. So right, no, uh, your question is whether we should put some TRE monies in library funds. Well, this, is, this has been uh, as part of the um, actual the video that's on the website. It's been on all the handouts that we're going to be making sure that they get more money in library resources, but I haven't seen it reflected in their budgets. So yeah, in the reason why, Dr. Atkinson, because sometimes the monies are given that half year or during the quarter. So when you see the early budget, you may not see it there, but during the year, and I'll get a list of all the monies that have been given out. But certainly, um, it, it's something that we could would add. But again, remember that we are losing students as well, and uh, we probably need to look at where can we cut to add more over here. Well, and, and the only reason I mentioned, Dr. Zendez, is as we look at the uh, end of the year financial audit, so yes. the numbers are the same. So I, I looked at the beginning balance and I look at the end balance. It's basically the same. So I just was hoping you'd be able to, and not right now, obviously, but if you go back and get us some information on what library resources, because it could be that we're looking at expanding Wi-Fi, Internet, tablets, whatever else, you know, exactly. you're doing, but so we can publicize that as well. Okay. Okay. Good idea. Um, and then I've got um, on the page eight, I don't know what tab this would be, but it's facilities construction projects. Mm -hmm. And it lists uh, veterans, turf, soccer field, pending, design team, pending general contractor. And I thought the last time, Mr. Cowan, you all um, pretty much said that you were going to be going with Paragon for all of the turfs. I think that, yes. If I may. Um, because we're in litigation there, that slowed us down. Now, okay. I mean, we need to go and say, uh, put the people on notice. The law our lawyer needs to put the other side on notice and say, look, we want to fix and put in the turf at this particular school. And I know they're desperate to have it because they right. wanted to have it. They wanted to have it for this season. They're not going to make it, and they're having to go play off campus on some of their soccer games because we don't have it. But it, uh, the board approved litigation at Veterans, yes, you know, and, yes. and so, so that's why Veterans High School is last waiting. on the list. Yeah. I mean, Paragon, it's, it's already approved to do the next yeah. four projects, but Veterans is still not being yeah. actively done. So and, the next one's uh, Pace High School. Yeah. Okay. But I, I will say that uh, Pace would be next, but uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Miguel uh, Salinas, uh, I was going to say Saldana, I'm literally going back in old history. <laughs> Miguel, uh, with uh, my understanding, and this, you know, as counsel, uh, as you are, uh, that, you know, we can build at veterans. The only thing we need to do is tell them what we're going to do, and then they can oppose us. So, you know, we might, the administration might want to take that stance, say, look, we're going to start building, you know, and you can move ahead. Mr. Sanchez, you want to address and, that? And uh, we, we had that discussion with, with Paragon. Uh, you know, when we were trying to stagger the, the program, we said, I'm going to work with board and legal and see, is there any possible way that we could go ahead and put veterans online, just like the other ones? Uh, so maybe maybe we need to just focus directly on that field itself because we uh, we want to build it inside the football uh, and playing area or th at the stadium over there so so maybe we could do an ex uh, you know but that's something that has to be discussed among <laughs> you guys another meeting yeah, I, I will bring Different it up meeting. with uh, board legal counsel because it's a board legal counsel who's handling uh, this particular okay. case okay no he's not good uh, the question, the next question I had was on Besteda Middle School, Lucio, Vela Middle School. Were they always just going to be four lane tracks? They weren't going to be any bigger than the four lanes? Uh, no, all the middle school are four lane tracks because uh, many of the middle schools prefer to have competitions at the high school level, at the high school tracks. That works out. 
Um, okay. My, the, go ahead, Mr. Rodriguez. There is a, you just, yeah, I just got a few more questions. Okay. We're all going to finish. We have a lot of questions because you told us to wait to the answer. Yeah. So be patient, please. <laughs> I appreciate the, that. the little uh, flyer that you had on the proposed uh, facility maintenance projects, um, you know, the, um, you mentioned, colorful. yeah, the colorful one, yes, sir. You had mentioned, Mr. Sanchez, when you w went over this, that uh, that uh, we had approved the budget um, and the 11 cent increase uh, at the same time. And we actually approved the budget before we, we raised taxes um, and the approval before raising also one of the things that I think we had asked also, since we're now here hitting um, March, April, was where we are with the insurance. So I know it wasn't didn't make it this one, but maybe the next agenda, you'll have an update on the insurance for us and how that's going to play out? I, I think we, we made that presentation when we, we did the, the $15, $15 your, contribution. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And I, I said I thought we, we had already, as far as doing the estimates as to revenue and, and versus the expenditures, um, you know, that's not going to even play a role until next October because that's when we start the plan. Mm -hmm. So right now we're still we're still writing the old plan, the old yes. contribution. So so um, we're still about you know six seven months before we can get it right into that new change. And I think the the concern that we had last year about this time was making sure the employees knew exactly what to expect going in because you, they have also some choices to make. Uh, and as you enter the next two months, basically the end of the school year, they have some choices they can make. If they know in advance, it, it may impact what they decide. Well, yes, and uh, just for that, uh, Dr. Atkinson and board members, I ask uh, Ms. Escobar mm -hmm. to consider opening enrollment earlier without having to uh, create it as an action item until October. Okay. But if we start uh, enrolling like the first day of school when we come In back, August. then we're not rushed for two weeks That's to good. decide. So uh, that can be done, but action will not take place until uh, the October. We, have, we, we actually have two uh, videos that have addressed the changes, the contribution, and so forth. Uh, Mikael and I made those two videos. We, we sent them out to all the campuses and asked the principals to do that and do the same thing with the departments too because they're really uh, very simple videos uh, and, and they explain the changes. So the opportunities are there. It's, it's posted on our website. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, <clears throat> that I don't know that it's, this is going to happen. I, I don't see that playing out, but we'll, we'll continue and we made the statement to all the 70 plus members of the insurance committee, all they have to do is ask us to go ourselves and present, and we will. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we're working on that. And plus we had, I think, four other videos uh, of what we're doing with the screening and the pilot programs that we got going with Valley Baptist and Valley Regional. Thank you. Yes, uh, and I know that we, uh, we asked we asked, I think I want to say at the, um, probably about three months ago, about the pending status on the um, interior facilities assessment uh, with PBK. And it just came up last month when we paid out, you know, we were paying out uh, their invoice. Uh, Mr. Cowan, you had said you would get an update at this next meeting. And, well, but, I thought this was going to be the update. I haven't really looked at the yeah. figures, but they had a figure of 150000 They had a figure of 150000 they had put out on the last one. And I'm not exactly sure how much work PBK has done relative to the whole project. Yeah, it says 350 basically here, and I think that we paid the large majority of that already I in think the last month. Half of it didn't. Last Mr. Sanchez. Are we the okay, Mr. Sanchez, did we pay half of it? Mm -hmm. So we paid some, I think we paid like 50 percent. Yeah, fifty percent. Okay, fifty. So we still owe the other half. Mm -hmm. Now I had been some schools and just talked to informally to principals and said, "Have PBK ever gone by?" And uh, you know, a lot of them says they haven't even shown up yet. Right. So I don't know what their schedule is for visitations, and that disturbs me a little bit. So, you know, you might want to ask them. Well, that was kind of the comment, Mr. Cowan, I made at last month's meeting because we are paying half already, no, and I yet, don't. and yet we don't have, you know, anything that's going to actually show the yeah. schedule of their visits or their or their contact with the yeah. administrators. And I believe Mr. Leake, 
pointed out because you know they did lose an architect that he was very concerned about making sure that you know, hey who was minding the store down over here and I, he may want to make a comment about that Mr. Leake if that's okay Dr. Sandeth I said he asked Absolutely. We understand that they have visited all the locations. Yeah there you go. Our understanding is that they have visited all the locations that, that, that they were assigned. Where we are right now is that they're in the final stages of completing the survey that was sent out to all the schools. Uh, we ran into a situation where some principals had not completed that survey, and that's where we are now. They have been uh, notified again to complete this survey. And once that is done, uh, probably around mid-April, the board will, s will have the, uh, the, the final uh, assessment it's like in report. Two weeks. two weeks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The the uh, comment uh, or the question on the scoreboard. I know that uh, from the last facilities meeting, Mr. Cowan, you had said they were going to go out to bid and then come back, bring out, bring a recommendation they, to the board. They did. They have something to. So these are three. Are we saying that well, only three got, only three people bid? Uh, on the no, scoreboard? I don't think the direction was a bid. It was to get some it quotes. Wasn't a formal bid so procedure. I want to make sure that we clarify. At the facilities meeting? Yes. Yeah, it was we didn't to say ask that. for go out quotes. Because there's a lot of things. They could get proposals. They could do TASB. They could do other things. And I don't know how many you got actually run in. But you, you so this is all off the buy board then? Is that, is that no. what this is? Or? No, no, no these one. are quotes from, can you explain the three companies? Uh, who can explain? Uh, yeah. Just speak into the mic, please. Hi, good afternoon. Go. <laughs> it still works. It still works. Sorry. It's low bid. <laughs> yeah. Um, good afternoon. Yes, um, we yes, went right. out to solicit quotes, actually, from uh, all approved uh, cooperatives. So you went out to co-ops? Yes. Um, since they already did the, the procurement process, so um, what we did was we solicited. Um, it was a turnkey LED video display scoreboard for our football stadium. So these um, company, well, the companies were from these approved co-ops were emailed with the uh, dimensions that were needed. In return, we only received three, and two were from buy board, and one was from tips. So um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We uh, had 10 co-ops. Only three responded? Only three responded. Okay, in fairness to them, because we didn't say go out for sealed bids or anything like that. But no, we no, we didn't ask for bids. Go out and you know see what's out there in the market and see what you can do. So the question I think that Bania has is, you know, how was this evaluated? Is that what you were interested in? In the what? How was this evaluated in terms okay. of making a determination? Um, and do you have a recommendation? Well, yet? I can uh, just a little bit on that. The okay. uh, it was a team e a team effort um, when we received the quotes. Um, we had Mr. Chavez look into it, and then, um, like Mr. Sanchez mentioned, we had Mr. Martinez from KBSD because he's familiar with the actual uh, pixels and things like that. I'm not familiar with those things. Um, and since it was a turnkey, um, I don't know if you can see from what they responded. Um, they also have the uh, the warranty, the the size. It's not just the cost. It's just what's best for the uh, for the district, the best value. I don't have a recommendation. I don't recommend, but that's how it was evaluated. All that was turned in to Mr. Sanchez and. Do I, well, but does the rec administration have a recommendation? That's because you know what. Sooner I, or later, we got to just say go with something. Right. So what is the recommendation? Are you going to have it ready by we'll next Tuesday? Yes. Okay. Perfect. And, and if the, and the bottom line is, is okay. you're going to buy a car. You want a Nissan. You want a Cadillac. What can your budget afford? And that's what we're looking at, and that's how we're going to make a choice. <laughs> so just well, be careful because the rest of your house is falling apart while you get your Cadillac. Just be careful, that's all I say. <laughs> You're going to get a <laughs> Nissan <laughs> Versa. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, car is 17 years old. Mr. Count, or Mr. Elizondo, on the facilities maintenance departments, and you have the different athletics and transportation and so forth, um, they all have listed different uh, items. Um, and then you have your general uh, priority budget uh, based on that $100 million. Um, so there's a lot of overlap. Um, is there going to be one concise plan where this is our master plan? 
because it seems like it's... If I may address that, because one of the things, I think PBK is coming in and some other people are coming in, and one of the things we did at the very first facilities meeting in December of 2016 was, so what is our plan? And I still remember, you know, we really had a plan that hadn't been updated for years. Mm -hmm. You know, we were kind of putting out fires and we had a, a $150 million worth of work we estimated and $3 million in the budget to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, that's one of the reasons why we went and looked at looking for revenue when we raised the taxes to be able to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we, So there'll be something coming? Yeah, and, and that, that, that this is a work in progress. I think Mr. Uh, Leake is talking about this is a work in progress. And when they finally get this thing, all of these things, these are wish lists, these are things they want to do. They're, they're not budgeted yet. But what, what we have, what, and Mr. Sanchez, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, what we did was we, we allocated whatever money we collected with that increase in taxes are going to go to maintenance and building and new construction and everything. It's not going to go into salaries and not going because, you know, you don't have the money right. forever. Right. And, and, and so it's coming in. And I think there's a substantial uh, fund balance in there right now that's not spent yet. And not, mm -hmm. even though it's allocated for construction, but Mr. Sanchez, you can, you know, go well, ahead and extrapolate. And, and that's why, that's why as I was going through the list, I pointed out, you know, we already addressed this item, this item, this item. So we don't have a duplication. So yeah. we're in the process of weeding everything out, make sure it's, we're not going to double budget twice and, and, and those kinds of things. But uh, we're going we're gonna to get there. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work, and uh, we're up to the challenge. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're in a very fortunate position, as I told you at the beginning of this meeting, where other districts are not with what the board has approved very very enviable position and i think we're going to leverage that to the maximum and so I, I, as far as facilities uh, ladies and gentlemen I, I i'm so confident that we can get a lot of these things done mm -hmm. a lot of them and we go down five years and we start another set of mm -hmm. projects and then five and another set so <laughs> you're set 10 20 15 years down the road so you're you know, so I'm not as concerned on that side of, of the equation as I am with the regular school funding issues, okay? Because this is kind of, and then we're growing, we're, we're not growing very much on the, uh, on the property side part of the revenue. Uh, so that means we're going to get wealthier a little bit at a time every year, but that means less funding from the state. So we got to get ready for this. <coughs> That other side of the maintenance and operation, not not necessarily on the facility side. I think the facility side, uh, we <coughs> we have those funds restricted, so that we only use them for construction. And if this board and subsequent boards, or whatever the case may be, we continue that strategy, uh, you're set for a long, long time. And and you know our schools and our buildings should be the best our kids see every day, better than they have at home. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. My last two questions, uh, Mr. Arzondo, the, 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 um, the provision two to CEP preliminary, I know that that was looked at as a district uh, a few years ago and prior recommendations, the pros and cons, if we can get that uh, sent to us um, because I want to make sure that that's something that's actually been looked at again. Uh, uh, that's what we have been debating over the mm -hmm. last two weeks, mm -hmm. and that's why we're going to meet with Region 1. Uh, ultimately, we have to make a recommendation. Uh, one way uh, we're concerned that our accountability yes. is going to be impacted, but uh, uh, on the other side, you know, more funding. So the district is put in a position where we have to be able to do everything. We'll get you a list of pros and cons. I'll have uh, after your meeting. Uh, after your meeting, Mr. Right. Sanchez's office develop pros and cons as mm -hmm. to whether, uh, and I think to expand on that, and the board probably uh, one way obviously is that we have to survey all our parents again. Yes. The other way is to just leave it alone, and uh, that's where we have to decide in mm -hmm. terms of surveying so yes thank you yes but just finally uh, on the athletic uh, athletic uh, request I think that uh, it's it's probably been almost a year since that item was on the agenda it was last March or April that it was on the agenda so it kind of got kicked down 
a few times. But basically around that time, we were all talking about what was the protocol when uh, campuses were going to be ordering uh, uniforms, um, awards, recognitions, rings, whatever it was, what was the protocol that was being used. And so if this is the protocol that's being followed now, uh, then I don't have any, any further questions. Thank you. Ms. Pena, we'll start on my right. Yeah, and I had to, let me just put, go in order of the presentation. Uh, the, on page number eight, mm -hmm. where you have that the Pace High School band choir building is already, you know, going to be uh, used in completion. A uh, question was brought up, or an observation. When I was there, there were some po light poles in the parking lot. If I have my, if my understanding is that the light poles were in the way for the band to use that area as a practice and that they were looking at removing the light poles. Do any of you have any knowledge of that? Or if that, if the light poles, because when we turn around pay everything and everything's done after uh, some of the little things need to be changed, I like to make sure that, that it, it gets corrected and it's used and the band and the students have what they need to be able to perform and to do practice. So yeah. what's the status of the light poles in the parking lot? That's a real quick answer. I think you can answer that very quickly. It's already been taken care of, ma'am. There you go. When and when do you anticipate them being well, the actual job being done? That what we're gonna do it after. Right now, we're discussed with uh, a, a campus personnel there, and uh, right now we met in pretty much in there. We met on site. We looked at it, and uh, we're gonna do it after we completed the job. The problem is that was an after thing. It was not so much on the contractor side. It was something that was uh, misunderstood per saying. They wanted to relocate it, but they didn't say how they want to relocate. They wanted the the entire parking lot. So, but now it's been taken care of. Well, it's been clarified. We're going to rework on that. Thank and you. when do you estimate it getting actually done? I like to have, like, like let's say you say four months. Uh, okay, six months from now, me, I'll go check me, it out. Let me, let I don't just, have the time. Excuse me, Miss Miss Atkinson was not interrupted, Ms. which Pena, was asking. Let, let me, me ask. Let Pena. me ask you this real quick. Okay. You you can ask a question. I understand that. If you can answer that question with specificity, yes. do it. If not, you can email it to her once you find out the answer to that. That's what I was going to get to, because I, he might I not have the answer the right email. now for you. Okay, I'll That's wait why. for the email. Okay? All right. Thank it sounds you. like you need the answer now, but maybe no, he doesn't I'll wait have for it. an email with a definite date. There you go. That gives you, you plenty of time to go out and figure out. Thank, you, Thank you. It's done corrected. Ms. Okay, Payne, my next... On the scoreboard, do you have any questions? Or yes, I'll get there as soon as I get to this. Okay. Uh, the next thing on there, the veterans' bathrooms, they say well, we're going to be doing them. That's half a million dollars for visitor site bathrooms. Is that what we're still anticipating? Uh, I can answer that question very yes. quickly, Ms. Peña. The bathrooms at veterans fall under the same issue as the, as the turf field. Uh -huh. Because uh, the board approved litigation on veterans, we are not moving as that, quickly as we would like that's to. That's pending. But uh, we okay. had early quotes on that were about half a million dollars. We threw those off. This was before even litigation took place. So at this point in time, there's no recommendation pending for bathrooms at Veterans High School. Thank we you. do need to uh, build them. So we're not saying that we don't need them, just that they're not on the table right now. Yeah, I Dr. appreciate Sandeca, it. Thank, thank you for the clarification. May, um, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I've been at this game for a while too, even though I had a little break of about 20 years in between. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have some laws that we didn't have 20 something years ago, which, you know, a design build under in the Texas government, local Texas government code 2267, not 2269, but 2267. You know, if you set a budget of $250,000 and say to, a, you know, a group of uh, a contractor, put in the architecture, uh, do the architect, the engineering and everything else, and, you know, here's $250,000, I want 16 stalls for the girls and I want five for the boys and six urinals and I want a little concession town on the side, see what you can get me. And it might be a way to do it. And if not, you know, uh, our own crews can build the, the, that thing as well. So, I mean, I'd like the administration to just take a stab at it one way or the other. And I like the idea of taking a little test stab at 2267 and see if it works, if you can. Thank you, Mr. Kyle. Ms. Pena, can you proceed? Thank you. Okay, and so the next question that I have or the next statement, that well, on page number, this one doesn't have a number. The one right before 12, is that 11? What the, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I don't have, we don't I don't have tabs because you didn't give us what you have. So have Thank you. I, I would appreciate it if I would have had what you have in front of you. I like the book. let's relax. Come no, 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 but that's why I don't have it. Just understand. No, that's fine. That's fine. It doesn't have a upset. number, sir, on this one. Uh, before 12 is 11. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 
Yeah, it's not numbered. <laughs> it's right before 12. 12. Yes, it should be. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, on the proposed tax, and I, I was noticing the way we you the, the graph that you signed that you have here. I don't know if the, our our uh, TV station could put it up there, number 11. If not, I'll go ahead and, and ask. What I see here, the interest in sinking funds, the $16 million <coughs> bond payment. Yeah, when it's over here on the interest in sinking fund, uh, the state pays 65%, and am I correct in saying that, I'll wait for her to put it up, that 35% is being paid by the district? Is that correct in my interpretation? Correct. So my question is, because you know this really uh, um, resonated with me from what we did and what I said and how I said it. Back when we were raising the, the, um, the TRE and went out to the voters, we said that we were gonna move all the money from the interest in sinking to the uh, maintenance and operation. Thus, in doing so, in the way you have this scale, which is very clear, let me wait for her to get to it, should be number 11, it's just not numbered. Uh, yeah, you find number, there, 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 there. What I see here, where we had the maintenance operation, the, it has on there the $16 million bond payment, we would have to have paid 100% of it ourselves because we had no pennies in the interest and sinking fund, am I correct? in saying that, Mr. Sanchez? Uh, yes. So uh, then we had to go let back, me, let, let me finish, uh, let me finish okay. and then you'll answer after I'm done. So then we had to go back and put in the 11 cents into the interest in sinking fund so we could be able to have the state pay the 65% of our bond because if we have zero pennies in there, then we're obligated to pay 100% of our bond. But if we have pennies in the interest in sinking fund, now we can turn around and have the, sp the state pay 65%. And the reason that I say that I want to bring this up because when I went and pushed the TRE super hard, I gave my word that we would not raise any taxes at all, which we didn't raise taxes to go out for a vote, but we raised what we were able to raise without having it go out to the vote. In essence, we did raise 11 pennies, but we needed it so we um, could turn around and use more of our money ourselves instead of using our money to pay what we had in what, bonds. What's the question, ma'am? Because I think we're going so off am I subject. Am I correct that Call. we had to have the money in there, otherwise we would have had to pay 100% of our bond payment ourselves? Don't, don't answer that, that yet, Mr. Sanchez. Hold on. That's the question. Right. We had to have the interest and in sinking fund have some pennies in there in order for us to only pay 35% of the bond as opposed to 100% of the bond. I Ms. just want to justify to Ms. the public why we did what we did. Ms. Peña, it was a what is the question? Just, just the question so I, he can answer it. Is it correct that we had, I said it five times, I'll say I it. I know, six. that's why. Is I, it I correct understand. to say that we had to have the pennies or monies inside the interest and sinking funds in order for us to be able to pay only 35% of the bond payment and not be obligated to pay a hundred percent of the bond payment out of our funds. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Is, is that wait. correct? Hold on. Is that correct? Hold on. Uh, he, can he answer it now? Yes. It, okay. Yeah. Now you can answer. I, ju I just want to make it real simple. Yes, okay. please. Please, just real simple. All right. Here we go. Step one. You this. You used to have. No, no, don't move, Mary. No, move, you're what's happening? No, no, it moved by itself. Oh, <laughs> hey, that was gone. <laughs> it's it's because you have the control in your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There goes the 35 cents, 35%, whatever. Don't use this arrow, okay. just that, the good one. Okay, this one, okay, there. I got a big thumb. Anyway, um, okay, this is how you, you were before, okay? So what we did, when you did the TRE, you needed voter approval. So you move these over, they produced $24 million. But but because you didn't have these pennies over here anymore, the state wasn't going to help you pay this amount. So we went ahead and raised 24, took 16 million of it to pay the bond because it's a 16 million dollar bond payment, and you, we used the 8 million for TRE projects that we, we were trying to do. Well, the whole thing is, well, why did we get to keep all these 24 million dollars here? And that's what we did. We kept them here, and the board came and voted to put the 11 and a quarter pennies over here. So you got 11 and a quarter over here, 11 and a quarter over here. That's the key. This is what most districts haven't done, and they're envious of our district because we did that, because there's no, uh, eventually we're gonna get the IFA monies, and, and so these, the 35%, our share, it takes 11 pennies to pay our share, 
Okay, that's what that means. It takes 11 pennies of our local share to meet that bond payment. The rest of it comes from the state and we get the bond payment. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Estrada Hinojosa said, well, there are some, some bonds that we can refinance. That may lower this thing a little bit some more. Okay, but that's all we did. So, but when we move these monies over here, the, uh, Dr. Sendeja just said, no, we're not gonna take these monies that we moved over here and use them for, for salaries and any other projects. These are construction projects, so we're, we're holding to the $24 million, and that's how we're doing all these projects that we're talking about today. So this is the whole scenario. Thank and, you, Mr. Sanchez. And, and if you, while, you're, while you're up there, sir, if you can answer this, you have the 1.265, explain that at the bottom. What hold is, what do you hold on real quick. Hold on, Ms. Peña. Uh, do you have something uh, to add? Yes, uh, Ms. Peña, the other, I think Mr. Sanchez touched on it, but when you move the pennies over to the MNO, the state gives us additional weighted dollar amounts. Three to one. Three to one. So uh, I think people think, well, we lose over here, but we're not going to gain over here. Over here, we gain three to one dollars because of our states, our district's uh, current position. So that's why we had enough monies to pay for the uh, debt, and then we had some extras left for TRE. Okay. okay. And so we used to be a dollar four, Ms. Pena. We moved these pennies over here. If you had these two, made it a dollar fifteen. Well, we got a dollar fifteen on this side of the equation, the maintenance and operation, and we got eleven pennies over here, makes it a dollar twenty-six. That's what our current tax rate, and it's still one of the lowest in the state. Yeah, and, Ms. and thank you. And if I may, please, the reason I want to, because it's easier if you hear from the CFO and from the administration, explain okay. to the public, so there's no doubt in the way they think, because it's to our benefit that we did that, because it's going to benefit us in both sides. Ms. Peña, that's correct. And that's why I like for it as much as I like when people ask me questions. I'm going to ask you, thank and let me finish, please. And I'm going to ask you to thank you to give me the time to explain, because it means a lot to the not community. Not a problem, ma'am. That's fine. But this presentation has been given like maybe five times, just like the question was asked. That and it's on the website as well, too. I mean, it's not something that's brand new. That's all I have to say. Thank you. My okay. next question. Mr. Sanchez, before you go on, I oh. wanted to make a point here because this is very relevant. Okay. Uh, city, uh, the school system in Harlingen did something similar to what Deep did. They had a, but they didn't have a tax restructuring election. Well, they did not way. What they did was they left their interest in sinking alone, and then they raised their taxes the maximum they could uh, for maintenance and operation. And under state law right now, the most we can charge in taxes is seven a dollar seventeen. We're we're still a, a and a we're penny, below that right now. A penny and seventy five. Yeah, and if we wanted to raise our taxes to the maximum in other words, right now, Miss Pena, the most we could have as a tax rate is a dollar twenty let's see, what is a dollar twenty six plus one and three quarters is about a dollar twenty eight and a quarter somewhere around over there. That's the highest we could charge anybody. And at that rate, even at that rate, we would be the 33rd lowest tax, uh, but we'd have the 33rd lowest tax rate in the valley. Right. Like you saw on the rates over here, one of the school systems at $1.47. San Antonio's $1.49. Well, was it some of the school system? Katy, Texas is like $1.50. You know, of the top 25 school, largest school systems in the state of Texas, we are the second, before we were the lowest tax rate of all the top 25 largest school systems. Now we're second behind Houston, and Houston's got this multi-trillion dollar you know, tax base, which we don't. And so we're in great shape financially. Thank you, Mr. Cowan. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go and, ahead, Okay, my next question, and, and just for that, I, I like One for people question. to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. That's just the way I was raised and educated. Question, the last question I have is on page 12. On page 12, you have the facilities construction projects. And I notice here where we have the design, build, energy conservation, a uh, total of uh, $25.5 million. Now, in that amount, because I see 1 million, 1 million, 2 million, 2 million, 1.5, 1.5, 2.5, you can see it up there. My question is, as far as that money amount, estimated budget, and we have the design team, we don't have the contractor yet, or our infrastructure construction. Am I safe to assume 
that that $1.5 million is going to be what you think will cost us to get it up to par with the design built and uh, conserving energy? Is that what that money amounts is? Or is, or is that money, am what's the money amount total? How did you arrive to that total for each school? Uh, but let me just interject real quick. Uh, there, there is no recommendation for energy um, efficiency, right? We, we are not Z? there yet. We just received the proposals and we will be evaluating those uh, proposals, uh, estimates, uh, or proposals with estimates. We will be evaluating those, and then uh, we will be coming back with a recommendation. There's two energy companies that are working with us, and we gave them each several schools. So this is where the list comes from. Th and th these are just the proposals. So there's, there's nothing that has been brought and if I may, Spain, okay, my uh, question if, if still stands. Hold no, on, hold on, because no, I want my me, question. Let me finish, Please. because you're I, leaving people with the wrong no, impression. No, 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 I just want to know, sir, it's a simple okay, question. Okay, well, go ahead Please. quickly, and then let's... Please, I just want to know how on God's earth we came up with an estimated budget, we and didn't. it's different, so it's on here in black and white, so that... I'm but sorry, Spania, I can only... We did not come up, that's what I'm trying to tell you. This is the estimates from these people who are wanting to do the work. We haven't accepted anything. That's their estimates, not oh, our okay. estimates. That, okay, that's okay, the answer. That's the point. It's their estimate, now, not ours. Now, what, what I was okay. we're trying to say in relationship to this, so you can understand, the administration is also looking at them doing it alone. You know, and they're going to have their own figures. And then they have the PBK, who is kind of trailing along parallel a little bit to what's going on with some of their estimates as well. And, uh, you know, so, uh, I mean, w this is a work in progress, and it may, I mean, uh, we're not here, you know, in this meeting over here to, to work and to please, you know, people who want to do energy conservation work for us. We're here to make sure our children are taken care of, and the administration is going to be doing the same thing. So let them finish the work, finish the estimate, see what happens, and see if we even do this, you know, because we haven't made that decision yet. The same thing with, uh, you know, 2267 on terms of P3s and things like that. We haven't made a decision there either. So everything's very preliminary. So if anybody thinks we're there or we're going to go hire people next week and do something, you know, unless I'm mistaken, Dr. Sandekas, I believe that we're... We're, you know. we're evaluating the yeah. uh, estimates that we received and uh, we will be making some determinations and coming to the board. It may be that we may not accept any or we may accept some or we may do some internally or with their guidance we may uh, have some of our maintenance people do some of them but the intent here is to allow administration to review all the projects that were brought in and then we will make a determination but we're not there yet on this one. Thank so you. am I clear to understand that this estimate you really don't have the details as to what these amounts are and these are the ones that are being brought in by the companies that are listed there? Well is, is that correct. The, is that what the you're companies saying? went into the schools and did their own review of, okay. of the schools. Uh, I don't I have not seen them the uh, details. fully and, and uh, we'll be meeting with uh, Okay. Uh, the folks involved and we'll be looking at each school, each cost in determining maybe there's a part of priority, maybe we don't have enough money to do everything, but we will do some, we may do all or we may do none. But at this point in time we, we need to sit down and, and review with administration next steps. And the Coach. reason that I asked that, if I may miss, this is my last, uh, the reason that I asked that because I was, we, it, it's been harped on at every board meeting official board meeting that whenever we go and something's on the agenda we're just to approve it because we already discussed it here so we have no. you discussed it this is what i've been told this is what i received this is what i put in my my computer that we already discussed it so by the time we get to the meeting we know so i'm asking the question here so am i safe to say that none of this is really anything etched in stone but it's just something that's presented to you and you're still yet to look at it. Am I correct? Ma'am, let me answer that real quick. No, let, me, let me ask the let people. Me ask you that, let me, let me, let how me do you know and I don't know? Let me tell you one thing because you're As talking for me. Uh, and I'm going to tell you one thing. Okay. When we brought the TRE to this, uh -huh. we, we, you went out and you voted against it. So it's not that it's set in stone. So when we did TRE committees and we did this, you went up and you went and you presented. That's your vote. You voted against it. I voted for it. That's what it is. Same thing here. You can go over there and vote on it. Doesn't mean that because we talked about it here is something that you need to approve. No, if but you I feel want that details. It, hold on. If you feel that it's not what you need to vote on, then you vote no.
But I if like it's something details. That you, I understand, man. But Can you're I get saying you're saying that because we talked about it here, we went on it. Same thing. I just rephrase that. TRE, you voted against it. That doesn't mean that you went up there and you voted like everybody else. I'm That's your choice. That's my choice. That's what we believe. What's best for the kids? As soon as they get the details, I'm sure they will give them to you, and you make that decision once you sit up on your chair. Okay, and here's my point. If I'd like to see this information in another committee meeting so we could ask details on it. That, and, that is and that's it, exactly right. You have that choice. I would like yes. that to happen. Nobody's and asking you to vote against what you believe in. Uh, that's what I'm saying. If I may say, Ms. Peña, I have already spoken to Mr. Cowan uh, to set up another meeting uh, within the next two weeks, if not next week, the following, to discuss P3 options. Uh, fiscal options and to discuss the options that we're going to take regarding the uh, estimates that were given to us. So at that meeting then we will discuss more specifics okay. of each of the projects and also have a presentation by our financial advisors on all the options for Great. P3 financing. Thank a you very and much. Everybody's welcome to those meetings. Coach, go ahead coach. I'm sorry all to right. have left you all the way until the end but. One minute. <laughs> no. Go ahead, Coach. I, I, I want to comment on some things here. Uh, concerning the libraries, Doc, uh, a lot of people don't call me, and that's fine. But um, I did get two calls about the libraries, and uh, they were complimentary calls for you all uh, supplying monies that hadn't been supplied in over 10 years. 10 years. And a lot of people were here. Um, you know, were involved in the lack of uh, supporting our libraries, but they appreciated the 80000 that was given to every librarian, uh, library, uh, and uh, you all, you know, run the district uh, very well, I might say. I mean, uh, I appreciate all the information and all the time that you all take to, to present these things to us or whatever. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is the scoreboard. Last year, we operated without a scoreboard. We're the 13th largest um, school district in the state, uh, and it was embarrassing for us to uh, participate. Uh, you, we had people from out of town throughout the valley come and, and see us play or whatever and say, you know, what's wrong with you guys? I mean, you know, why? Well, it, it didn't happen. I think the scoreboard has been vetted. Uh, uh, I'm glad uh, that uh, it's been vetted greatly. Uh, I, I bring out uh, FAR several times because FAR, uh, I go down there to see games and see our kids play and, and uh, see uh, why can't we, you know, have something in comparison to this. And, and uh, it came about, the, the person made a trip down here and made a presentation and and explained everything correctly. I mean that that we wanted to find out and and uh, how we could raise funds ourselves and and so forth. And you know, believe me, if you if you've gone up and down the valley to see games, you go to West Laco, you go to Far, whatever, and you see the revenues that that are brought in by the uh, displays on the boards of different people. This quarter sponsored by. Uh, agency uh, motor company or whatever it is and, and you know and and they charge them so much fun and, and it was explained to us here uh, very well about how that could happen and how we could help our funds and and you know uh, I cannot see us uh, and I hope that we can see beyond our negativism here why our young people and our kids uh, can't, uh, you know, have access to uh, good and fine products that, that are up here, uh, just up, uh, up the valley. And, um, you know, I appreciate all the work that you all have done to, to bring in um, the, uh, what you did. And I know, I know that there's not too many people there's a lot of people that scale, sell scoreboards, but there's not too many people that sell in the market that you're looking at, you know, and so forth. And, and there, you know, you can count them on one hand, the, the people that make those things available. And I think that there's a big possibility we can look beyond the negativism 
and the negative uh, uh, aspects of, of the other things and look at the positive uh, aspects that it will benefit our, our young people. And the, the third thing I want to talk about is the stadium. Uh, and I don't think, you know, there, there's only been one since 1960, uh, 1954 when it was built, only one improvement of the stadium that has been done by the people that built the stadium, which is Sam's people. And that's when uh, some years back, uh, a group of us approached them to help us out. They say, we don't do that anymore. We only help hospitals and, and colleges. And, but we're going to make an exception because they came and visited, uh, visited us, our, our stadium at a game. And they realized that, that we needed that. And that's the building of the two uh, new um, uh, facilities, dressing room facilities over there for the board members part. Those are the only improvements done. So consequently, uh, I think it's imperative that if we're going to make comments about this and that, that we see what's out there. And all you got to do is go 65 miles again, go see far what they did, go see uh, what's been done at West Laco, go see uh, even uh, 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 Raymondville. Raymondville has, you know, a great improvement to their gym, to their uh, stadium, you know, and we know that if, if the law says that if you make any improvements to the stadium, you got to build a uh, elevator. You have to have elevators, and you have to improve your handicap facilities. And there's ways of doing that without expanding the stadium. There's no use to us expanding the stadium to 2,000 more people, for example. We already have 10,000, and, and you may lose uh, maybe some seats by improving the handicap facilities like you're supposed to, besides the elevator, you know, and at the same time that the seats that you lose by improving the scoreboard, uh, uh, the uh, facility where the, the scoreboard is uh, kept, you know, and, and the announcer, you know, we, that needs to be expanded to where you can recover the seats that you're going to lose by improving the handicap facilities, which is the being able to walk up the, the steps of, of the stadium. It's That's not like it used to be. And it's ADA required complaint. that you improve that. So, we're working on it. but again, I don't think it's fair to just, without being knowledgeable of, of the things that are out there to make just round comments and no, I don't like this and I don't like that or whatever without really realizing what you're talking about. There's people here that we have um, hundreds of thousands of dollars of people that are professional people to that aspect that we can get there, you know, hey, what do we do or what the improvements are and so on and so forth. I'll, 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 you're looking at your watch. No, 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 That's Coach, right. because I, I said two hours and we got one more minute. Okay. So, but uh, but thank you. Those those are comments well taken. I don't think anybody here is uh, specifying on the negativity, but that's just usually the loudest part. It's like remember when we talk about the chihuahua yeah. that barks. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, there's more positive than negative, and I just want to thank you guys. You guys are doing an excellent job. I know that we throw a lot of rocks at you, some more than others. Uh, but uh, thank you for sticking through it. I know that there's a lot more work. There's a lot more questions that are going to be asked, except they're not going to be today. Probably for the next meeting. But I want to appreciate everybody that was in the audience. Thank you, everybody back here as well. I really do appreciate being here and listening to everything. Uh, go ahead, sir. Um, I want to close. Yeah, the budget has been closed. And I want to close this with I, I, I asked for landscaping. And I, I looked at some of our schools. And in some cases, I don't know if anybody's ever done this. You know, you plant three trees on the same day. And two of them grow, you know, like 50 feet tall. And the third one, for some reason, doesn't grow at all. You know, and it's, you know, you, it, and it hits clay and other things like that. But then you can also have, there are plants actually in Brownsville that will grow right through clay, you know. And uh, so I, I, you know, I have a four and a quarter acres where I live. And I know it looks messy and Miguel Salinas is going to clean it up for me after everything because that's what good lawyers do. They we clean up everything. Everybody. You know, we set you over there, you're going to get it. But I, I have some, some plants here and, and if I, I would like to, uh, I don't know if you have a microphone, I can very quickly show, go over some of this if you give it to me. You're, you're uh, we can, close it and then we'll I'm going to close the meeting and I'm going to ask you just kind of look at some of these things and I want, 
But uh, but while we're here, uh, I do want to point out a couple of things. So, so we'll adjourn the meeting? Yeah, we can adjourn the meeting over here. And if I welcome you. everybody to take a look here, because this is kind of a, you can keep it televised. This is an unusual little tree here. You see these pretty flowers here? They're like little angels. This over here, they grew, I grew this from a seed. I've got one of these things, grouped from a seed that's 20, 22 feet tall at my house. I gave one to Dr. Sendek because his husband, John Fox, because he loves gardening over here. You know. This is a kind of a ground cover that grows. This tree here is a Montezuma cypress. This is the tree... I grew that from seed. It took six weeks to germinate. But this tree over here, they get to be 150 feet tall. They live 2,000 years, OK? And they get in circumference, they'll get to be 30 feet in circumference. The biggest tree in, is in Mexico City, I think, at uh, Tula. Uh, and that is about 50 feet in diameter. This is a Montezuma cypress, you know? And we have some. Montezuma cypress trees in Brownsville. Uh, I went with uh, Gene Fernandez and he gave me just one seed pod and seven out of the 10 seeds in the seed pod germinated, which I thought was incredible. This is the little bush here that has red flowers that look like the Royal Ponciana flowers or Framboyan flowers. It's very similar. This one is similar except it's a tree. This is a bush, this is a tree and that has the yellow flowers that look just like these are native plants. Everybody that knows this one here, this is an ebony. I've got a couple of ebonies over there I'd ask you to look at over there. And ebonies, they grow fast, they grow well, they live a long time. This is a beautiful plant here. It's called um, Turk's Cap. Some of you may be familiar with Turk's Cap, some of you may not be familiar with Turk's Cap. And this is a good ground cover. I have a plant over there, if you see this one over here. Here, this is, looks like a weed, most people cut it down, but this is actually, uh, this tr plant here, and this one here, hummingbirds chase after, go feed on these things. You have, on the Anahuac trees, these are in bloom right now, you know? Some of you wonder where you're getting your allergies from, here they are. You know, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know. But anyway, so and I dug up some of these, and the reason I'm telling you is I dug up some of these out of my yard, and you know, I, I thought maybe I killed them because the roots made out a bit, but actually I watered them, and they're responding or whatever. You can take something home. I'll give it to you, or whatever. But anyway, and uh, this one over here. There's two trees that I want to point out. This one here is a spiny hackberry. A lot of the local people call it chaparros. But they grow to be a nice tree. A very, very nice tree. Beautiful. And you can train these to, to be ornamental trees. There's another tree here. This one here, and I have another one. I'm over here. Anyway, oh, it's in the, bu in the bucket right here, in the box right here. These things over here are Brazil trees. I don't know if you ever heard of Brazil trees. It's, and Brazil trees have a, a fruit on it that looks like a little blackberry or blueberry. And the birds, they attract birds. Uh, I guess as a discipline, you could tell children when they don't behave, they have to go climb these trees because they're very thorny and I think they'll behave themselves if they <laughs> grab it. <laughs> you can't grab these things over here. But what you can do, Brazil trees, generally are about 18 feet tall in Texas. I've got 30 foot tall Brazil trees in my yard. They can be trained to grow. One of the nice thing about these trees is you don't, I mean, you just let nature run its course. If you want to water, they'll grow faster. But when you stop watering, they'll work. So, and this one over here, I brought this just so you know. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a bottle brush tree. Okay, and a lot of things. Bottle brush trees grow very well down over here. They're not native. You know, and in England, in fact, they have these trees and they grow them as almost like flowers with seeds, perennials. They don't get very tall, but here, they'll get 25 feet tall. They get big. If you go by the First Baptist Church, there's a bunch of bottle brush trees. Some others are the, the yucca trees. If you go in front of Southmost Elementary and you drive by and there's about six or eight yuccas right there and they're trimmed and they're very, very nice. So. 
what I would uh, ask the administration to look at the possibility of encouraging as many of our uh, principals to look at in integrating native plants in and looking and seeking some help from the city. The city has a forester that can, who can come in and work on this. And uh, what is it? Uh, on, and on the Montezuma Cypress, I'd like to put a challenge to the school system. If we can get the Montezuma Cypress, that's the only one I'm going to keep me out of it, the Montezuma Cypress. Ah, yes. It's too young. It's too young to take. It's too young to take. I'll give you one when I'm done. But if, you can, if we could get the Montezuma Cypress to going at 50 of our schools, and we put four on each campus, and we have these tall trees over there, that would bring the number of Montezuma Cypress in Brownsville up from about, probably about 20 in the whole town to 200. And then from 200, we could build a seed stock and biological diversity to be able to get them to keep going. But anyway, so I'm going to look at this. Somebody wants to take a plant, they're welcome. And I'll take the rest home and put them back in the ground. Thank you. Yeah, you can have it. <laughs>